Hello everyone. In today's exciting session, I'm going to discuss about next generation firewall and intrusion prevention system. Before we get into the discussion on next generation firewall and IPS, it's important to know how the traditional firewall works and the logic used to allow or discard the packets. We'll also go through the firewall security zones and we'll have a brief overview of how the traditional IPS and the logic behind the packet forwarding and discarding by the IPS. And then we will have a look at next generation firewall and IPS. Traditionally, a firewall is a network security device that monitors incoming traffic that is from public to private and outgoing network traffic that is from private to the public and decides whether to allow or block specific traffic based on defined set of security rules. Figure shows a typical network design for a site that uses a physical firewall like Cisco ASA connected to a router which in turn connect to the internet. Traditionally a firewall sits in the forwarding path of all packets so that firewall can choose which packet to discard and which to allow through. By doing so the firewall protects the network from different kind of issues or hacker attacking the network. And by allowing only the intended type of traffic to flow in and out of the network. It establishes a barrier between secured control internal network that can be trusted. An untrusted outside network such as the internet. Firewalls are your first line of defense in any kind of the network. Most firewall use the following kinds of logic to make the choice of whether to discard or allow a packet such as match the source and destination IP address or identify applications by matching their static well-known TCP and UDP ports. Watch application layer flows to know what additional TCP and UDP ports are used by a particular flow and filter based on those ports. Match the text in URL of an HTTP request. That is, look at and compare the contents of what is often called the web address and match patterns to decide whether to allow or deny the download of web page identified by that URL. It also uses stateful inspection in which a firewall monitors the state of active connections and uses this information to determine which network packets to allow through the firewall. Firewall uses the concept of security zones when defining which hosts can initiate new connections. The firewall rules defines which host can initiate connection from one zone to another zone. Also by using zone, a firewall can place multiple interfaces into the same zone in case for which multiple interfaces should have the same security rules applied. You can have three types of zone in firewall. The inside zone, the outside zone and the DMZ zone. The inside or trusted zone is also referred to as the private zone. As the name implies, the zone contains assets and systems that should not be accessed by anyone outside of the organization. This includes user workstation, printers, non-public servers, and anything that considered to be an internal resource. Devices found here have private IP address assigned in the network. The outside or untrusted zone is also called the public zone. This zone is considered to be outside the control of an organization and can be thought of as simply the public internet. The third basic security zone is called as demilitarized zone. Resources in the DMZ require external access from the outside zone. It is common to see public facing servers in the DMZ, such as email server, web server and application server. A DMZ allows public access to these resources without putting the private inside zone resources at risk. By separating these web servers into the DMZ away from the rest of the enterprise, the enterprise can prevent internet users from attempting to connect to the internet internal devices in the inside zone, preventing many type of attacks. Then let's look at the intrusion prevention system. It is a form of a network security that works to detect and prevent identified threats. A traditional IPS can sit in the path that packets take through the network and it can filter packets same like a firewall but it makes its decision with different logic. 
It uses a signature-based technology to detect network intrusions. A signature specifies the types of network intrusion that you want the sensor, sensor to detect and report. They use signatures to detect known types of attack, such as denial of service attacks, and respond with action that you define. The IPS first downloads a database of exploit signatures. Then the IPS can examine packets, compare them to the known exploit signature, and notice when packet may be part of a known exploit. Once identified, the IPS can log the event. Discard packets or even redirect the packets to another security application for further examination. A traditional IPS differs from the firewall in that instead of an engineer at the company defining the rules for that company based on applications and zones, the IPS applies the logic based on signature supplied mostly by the IPS vendor. To accomplish its mission, the IPS needs to download and keep updating its signature database over time. Finally, we will have a look at the Cisco Next Generation Firewall. Cisco and some of their competitors started using the term next generation when discussing the security products to emphasize some of the newer features. In short, a next generation firewall and a next generation IPS are now current firewall and IPS products from Cisco. The following list mentions few features of the next generation firewall. It includes a traditional firewall feature, that is like a stateful firewall filtering, NAT, or PAT and VPN termination. Along with the tra traditional firewall feature, we have AVC, Application Visibility Control. This feature looks deep into the application layer data to identify the application. For instance, it can identify the application based on the data rather than the port number to defend, attack, to defend against attack that use random port numbers. Next feature we have is Advanced Malware Protection. Next Generation Firewall Platform can run multiple security services such as network-based anti-malware function that can run on the firewall itself, blocking file transfers that would install mal malware and saving copies of the files for later analysis. Another feature it has is URL filtering. This feature examines the URL in each web request, categorizes the URLs and either filters or rate limits the traffic based on the rules. The Cisco Talos Security Group monitors and create application scores for each domain known in the internet. It's URL filtering being able to use those scores in its decision to categorize, filter or rate limit. The last feature we have in the next generation firewall is NGIPS. As you can see, it can also run the NGIPS feature along with the firewall. Notice, note for any uh, of the services that benefit, benefit from being in the same path that packet traverse like a firewall, it makes sense that over time this function, this function could migrate to the run on the same product. So when the design needs both firewall and IPS at the same location in the network, the next generation firewall product can run the NGIPS feature as shown in the combined device. Similarly, as with next generation firewall, the next generation IPS also adds new feature to a traditional IPS. An NGIPS performs traditional IPS feature like using exploit signature to compare packet flows, create a log e events, and possibly discarding or redirecting the packets. It also includes AVC. As with next generation firewall, an NGIPS has the ability to look deep into the application layer data to identify the application. It also includes contextual awareness. Next generation firewall platform gathers data from hosts such as OS detail, software version, application running, open ports, and so on. This data is fed, fed to next generation IPS, which helps in next generation IPS to focus on actual vulnerabilities. The next feature we have is reputation-based filtering. A Cisco NG IPS can perform reputation-based filtering, taking the scores into account, which is again updated by Cisco Talos Security Intelligence Group. And the last feature we have is event impact level. Security personnel need to assess the log event, so an NGIPS provides an assessment based on impact levels, with characterization or as to as to the impact if an event is indeed some kind of an attack. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thank you.